Let's create a volume settings menu in Godot 4. Here I have a test scene with a few sound effects, some music playing, and some background ambient noise. I want players to be able to control the volume of each of these things. Start out by creating a volume setting scene. I like to put this under a UI folder. Create a new scene called Volume Setting and have it inherit from an HBox container. Inside our volume setting, we are going to create a label, an H slider, and another label. The first label will display our bus name, the H slider will be the volume slider, and the last label will show a percentage. Name each node accordingly and attach a script. Now we need a way to set our bus name. I want to be able to do this in the editor and see the changes immediately. So let's make our script a tool and create a private field called bus name. Then we'll create an exported property called bus name and write our getter and setter. Create a private field for the bus name label and grab a reference to it in the ready method. Now create a private method called update bus name label. If the bus name label is not null, we'll set the text to be our bus name field. Then, in our bus name properties setter, we'll call update bus name label every time we set the bus name. Let's also give our bus name a default value so that we'll always have something there in the editor. We'll also call update bus name label in our ready method. Now, if we build the solution, close and reopen the scene, you'll see our default label name. If we click on our volume setting node, we'll see the bus name exported property in the property inspector. And as we make changes to the bus name, we should see the label get updated in real time. Let's deal with the volume slider next. First of all, it's way too small. Let's set a minimum size to some reasonable value. Click on the H slider node and in the inspector, open the layout section and change the custom minimum sizes X value. I'll keep mine at 300 for now. Back in our script, create a private field for the volume H slider and get a reference to it in the ready method. Connect to the volume sliders value changed event. When the volume sliders value is changed, we'll want to set the volume and update our volume percentage. Create a private field for the volume percentage label and get a reference in the ready method. Create a private method to set the volume percentage based on the volume sliders value. I'll call mathf.floor to prevent any decimal values and append a percentage sign. Set the volume percentage label's text property to this string, and then call the update volume percentage label method in your ready and volume sliders value changed methods. If we run the scene, we'll see that the volume percentage label's text updates as we update the volume slider. It's time to connect everything to our audio servers. Volume is measured in units called decibels. Decibels measure the intensity of a sound, and it's in a logarithmic scale. For every six decibels, the sound's amplitude is doubled. So for example, a volume of zero dB is half as loud as a volume of six dB. We want to provide our players with a simple volume slider that goes from zero to 100%. So we will need an equation that converts our percentage to a decibel value. In my games, I like to start all of my volume settings at 50%, giving the player the option to make the volume louder or quieter without having to go into their operating system's volume settings. So I want 50% to represent zero decibels, and then I'll say 100% will be six decibels. To convert percentage to decibels, we'll use the following equation. We'll start with a constant value. This will affect the maximum amount of decibels the player can get, this will be multiplied by the log of the percentage divided by some divisor. This divisor will determine where zero decibels is. I'm going to set the constant to 20 
and the divisor to 50. This will make 50% 0 decibels and 100% close to 6 decibels, or double the volume. Back in our script, create a new private method called convert percentage to decibels. This will take in a percentage and return the volume in decibels. I'll create two local variables, scale and divisor, and return the scale multiplied by log of our percentage divided by the divisor. It is important to remember that we need log base 10 here. c -sharp provides a math.log10 method that we can use. But if you're using GDScript, you can get this by taking the natural log and dividing it by the natural log of 10. I should note that Godot has a built-in linear to db function that will turn linear energy into decibels. You can use this instead if you'd like. This function creates a different graph than the one I'm using. I believe rather than using a range from 0 to 100, you'll want to use a range between 0 and 1 or 0 to 2 if you want to allow users to increase the volume past 0 dB. Now let's hook everything up to the audio server. First, we'll create a new exported property called bus index. This will allow us to set which bus the volume setting will affect. In our event handler for the volume sliders value changed event, we'll first check if the value is zero. When the value is zero, we can simply mute the bus and return. If the value is not zero and the bus is muted, then we'll want to unmute the bus. Finally, we'll use our convert percentage to decibels method to convert our value into decibels and set the audio server's volume dB on the bus. I've made a slight error here. The audio server takes a float to set decibels, so I'll update the conversion method to return a float rather than a double. We want to make sure the initial value of our H slider matches the volume of the bus. Rather than calculating the inverse of our convert percentage to decibels function, I'm instead going to keep track of the percentage of each bus. For a real game, you would likely want to save the user's settings to a file, but in this example, I'm just going to store these values statically. I'll create a dictionary as a private static field, where the key will be the bus index and the value will be the percentage. In the ready method, I will check to see if the dictionary has a value. If it does, we'll set the H slider's value to that value. Otherwise, we'll set it to 50. Remember that 50% would be 0 decibels. Then, in the event handler for the value changed event, we'll update the dictionary with the latest value. Now when we run our project, we'll see the slider and percentage label automatically be set to 50%. Using a static dictionary means that if we have our volume settings in the main menu and in an endgame menu, the values will always be up to date with what the player sets. In a real project, you may want to store these user settings in a singleton auto-loaded script that you can read and write to disk to remember the player settings. Let's test this out. I'll temporarily throw an audio stream player in my scene and have it auto-play some music. For now, I'll leave it on bus zero. Next, we'll test that the bus index is working. Go to the Audio tab at the bottom of Godot and create a new audio bus. Name it Music. Then we can set our temporary audio stream player to the Music bus, and temporarily set the bus index of our volume setting to 1. Running the project, we can see that it still works. If the bus index did not exist, we would get an error. Now we can create a scene to contain all of our volume settings. Create a new scene called Volume Settings, and make the root node a VBox container. Then add four volume setting children. I'll go through and set the bus name for each of them, and then the bus index. Now I'll create a bus in the audio settings for each of the categories I want. I like to have one for music, 
one for ambient background noise, and one for sound effects. I don't like how uneven my UI looks, so I'll go back to my volume setting scene and change the bus name label to have right horizontal alignment, and then I'll change the container sizing setting to expand. This will make everything line up a little better, but feel free to play around with these settings. As you theme things, you'll probably want to play around with the spacing and margins. Now we'll go to all our audio stream players in our project and make sure that they are assigned to the correct bus. I'll create a new scene for my in-game menu and add the volume settings. Then, I'll add the in-game menu into my player scene. In my player script, I'll check if the cancel button was pressed and show or hide the in-game menu based on whether or not it's visible. Let's test things out. You can see that the volume settings work. A couple things to fix though. First of all, the size of the UI changes when we go from 100% to a percentage with two digits to a percentage with one digit. We can fix this by determining the size of the volume percentage label when we're at 100%, and then setting the minimum X to that size. I also like it a bit better if the volume percentage labels are also right aligned horizontally. Another issue is that while we can hear the volume change for the music and background ambient noise, we can't tell how the sound effects volume slider is changing the volume of our sound effects. To fix this, let's add some more code to our volume settings. In our ready method, we'll check to see if we have any children that are an audio stream player and we'll save this as a private field. We'll also throw this in an if statement to check if we're running in the editor. If we're in the editor, we don't want to play a sound effect from the tool script. In our volume slider value changed event handler, we'll play the audio stream player if it's not null. In our overall setting scene, we can add an audio stream player child to our sound effects volume setting. Now when we change the value of the sound effects slider, it will play a sound effect to demo the volume level. But sliding the slider causes the sound to play rapidly. We can fix this by adding a timer to our scene. We'll only play the sound effect if a certain amount of time has passed. And that's it! You can now add this into your settings menu. You can make the settings menu available from the main menu, or you can make it available from the in-game menu, or both. And you can theme it to fit your game. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, consider liking and subscribing. Leave a comment if this was helpful, or if you have any other ideas for a volume setting. If you want to learn how to organize sound in your Godot projects, you can check out my video about that.